Hi everyone, it's a new week and I have a new video for you. And today we are going to paint together this beautiful uh, cabinet. So, this piece is in a pretty good condition, but I have a small damage here that I have to fix. Let's get started. After taking the doors off, I realized that I cannot save these moldings because they weren't uh, the right size from the beginning, I, I suppose. So I just removed everything, I put them aside and I saved them because maybe I can use them on another project. And now it's time to clean our piece because it was pretty dirty. As my piece is nice and dry, now it's time uh, to scuff sand everything because this surface is pretty slick and to get it ready for the primer. Now that I wiped all the dust away guys, it's time to apply some primer. And I'm applying primer for two reasons. First is because, as you can see in some places, I sand it through the original finish and this may uh, cause some bleed through. And also because I want to have a nice and even base uh, for my paint job. I'm going to apply only one coat. This is going to be enough also because the colors that I'm going to use are a bit darker, so uh, that should be okay. So now it's time to finally start painting, guys, and I'm going to use one of my favorite uh, color combination. This is Peacock and Midnight Sky by Dixie Bell. And I also have a dedicated brush for each color and also a blending brush and a clean rug to unload uh, my paint from the brush from time to time. So I'm gonna start uh, with the midnight sky on the base and uh, guys just uh, like a quick tip for you, I um, sand it smoothly with a very uh, high grid my uh, primer just to get a nice and a smooth surface for my um, new finish. So I'm pretty much, my idea is to create kind of a deep look uh, with, um, with these two colors. But as I said, let's see. I have my Mr. Bottle because with uh, blending you want to keep your um, paint nice and wet. Now I'm going to add my second color, the peacock, which is a beautiful blue teal color. So guys, I'm working always with small amounts of paint, especially when you are blending, because if your paint is too thick, uh, it's going to create a very uneven and messy look. So uh, just keep in mind uh, small, um, small amounts. And although I'm trying to smooth my uh, brush strokes, you see me here doing some uh, stippling motions, but that is just because I have these molds and um, this is the way you uh, you make your paint to go into all these uh, little details here. And when you see that your uh, paint is not sliding good enough, just add a mist of water. I know it looks a little bit scary at this point because the first coat of paint is always a bit scary, almost always, but you have to trust the process. You. Uh, just don't be afraid to try things. I actually created some beautiful uh, finishes um, just by mistake because I was 
uh, looking for another finish but I just kept added, adding and adding colors until I was like wow this is not what I was looking for but this is looking just beautiful so this is just paint if you don't like it uh, you can always repaint it we need just to learn to embrace uh, our mistakes and just not to be so focused on, uh, on perfection now I'm going to grab my neutral brush and I'm going to start blending the colors it is a little bit dry here So I'm um, blending my colors with very light hand. I told you so many times in other uh, blending tutorials. This is the key to a good and perfect blending. Just by keeping your, uh, your hand as light as possible, you will get a nice and uh, seamless and easy blend. Just blend it. Of course, having a good uh, quality brush will make this even more easier, but it's not always absolutely necessary to have a fancy tool in order to be able to create something beautiful. I started with very cheap brushes and I was able to, to complete, to create beautiful and nice finishes. So, a good quality brush, of course, is going to make it so much easier and faster, but these, not having them, because they can be also pretty pricey, um, shouldn't stop you uh, to create. Pretty messy, pretty scary, but uh, I'm gonna let this, I'm, I will finish the entire piece and I'm going to let this allow to dry for at least two hours and then I will come back with the next coat and hopefully this uh, that second coat is, uh, coat, sorry, is going to be the last one now it's finally time to apply our protection guys and before doing this I'm going to lightly sand uh, the surface with a very fine um, sanding pad and the reason why I'm doing this I want to explain this a little bit is that I'm using a chalky style paint and the finish is a bit porous, chalky, which is pretty normal uh, for this type of paint and um, even when you are applying your um, top coat, it doesn't matter if it's um, a liquid one or it's, um, or it's um, a, say it with me, uh, a wax, the finish is going to stay a bit rough and to get a nice and smooth to the touch finish I always um, sand my pieces before top coating them so this is something optional if you want to do it um, you can do it if you don't you can totally skip this step and just apply your um, top coat directly on the um, unsanded finish but as I said my preference is to uh, sand a little bit uh, don't use too high grit sandpaper because you don't want to um, scratch your freshly painted finish and don't, don't get scared if you get like some uh, marks uh, it's okay because once you remove all the dust and put your top coat the finish is going to be nice and even so let's finally apply our wax. I'm going to use wax uh, with a La Petite brush by Dixie Bell and you also need a microfiber cloth or any lint free cloth. If you don't have a wax brush you can totally use a cloth but I'm telling you guys um, Applying wax with a brush is much uh, easier and faster. And I am going to apply two coats of wax over the entire piece. So when applying wax, 
you don't want to put too much but you have to put the right amount so that you will have the a nice protection and you also want to make sure that you remove any excess because otherwise it's going to build some white buildups and yeah, this is not looking pretty or um, professional so guys now it's time for the fun part it's time to bring this piece of furniture to the next level and i'm going to use some black wax and some gold gilding wax so as you can see i already applied um decorative waxes on this uh, side and on the other side i don't have i mean this one it's not looking bad it's beautiful but look how beautiful looks everything and how beautiful comes everything together with a little bit of decorative waxes because i told you so many times decorative waxes is a great way to upgrade your furniture just to bring it to the next level it looks so elegant almost luxurious it's not opulent it's just not too much and not too less so i'm gonna start with the black wax and I'm gonna take a little bit unload because you want to work uh, with small amounts of decorative waxes you can always add more if you feel like you want more um, so uh, you can of course remove it I always have uh, on hand a little bit of uh, clear wax because clear wax uh, works as an eraser uh, for the um, black and for the brown decorative waxes and as well if you um, if you use some gray wax so and also for the gold gilding wax and I'm going to apply this on the mold because I want uh, to create like a sort of patina or uh, an antique look and also around this uh, long decorative element just to create a little bit of shadowing and now I'm taking a microfiber cloth and I'm going to remove any excess uh, I need to tell you guys that um, working with decorative waxes it's pretty tedious uh, it takes some time but it's a lot of fun so just take your time and enjoy creating uh, beautiful looks now guys uh, remember I told you in some of my previous videos that uh, decorative waxes are also a great way to camouflage some of the defects and as you can see here i know you see it's a, 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 another color this is not gold gilding wax somehow i have a very narrow space here i think i just uh scratched this uh, mold here and now i'm just going to take a little bit of gold gilding waxes and go over all this high point and this is not going only to camouflage them uh, these scratches it's also going to seal them because gold gilding wax it's uh, oil based and this is going also to seal uh, these uh, scratches So guys, uh, this back, pan uh, back panel is um, taking apart and now I'm going to apply to glue this beautiful uh, wallpaper. Uh, it's with gold and has like some uh, grayish bluish inserts and I think this is going to be to look just, um, just beautiful. So I have some uh, wood glue, this is what I usually use. I diluted this one uh, with a bit of water because uh, it's a pretty old can and I'm also having um, an old 
um, uh, I'm having a cheap brush for this and I'm spreading a generous amount of blue over the, the surface. So guys, we are done here and fortunately my lightning is not so good, that's why the piece is looking a little bit much darker, the blue, at least it's much darker as it looks in person, but I'm very pleased with how this piece turned out. It was a long journey because this took me about two weeks, maybe more, uh, this piece is also pretty big, so if you guys like it please give me some thumbs up, leave me a comment below and don't forget to subscribe. As usual, thank you so much for watching and I will catch you next time.